In this video, we'll learn how to plot a line of position. In later videos covering the site reduction form, we'll learn how to calculate the values needed in this process, but first we'll look at how those values are used to plot a position. To chart a line of position, you'll need the following materials. A blank position plotting sheet, a parallel plotter, a compass, also known as a divider, and a pencil. Although the spacing of latitude lines is consistent throughout the globe, the spacing of longitude lines varies depending on your latitude. Near the equator, the spacing of longitude and latitude lines are equal, but as you approach either pole, longitude lines converge, narrowing as you go either north or south of the equator. To account for this, your plotting sheet has latitude lines pre-drawn but no longitude lines, which we'll need to add manually. We'll use the longitude scale in the lower right corner of the plotting sheet to get this spacing. First, we label the latitude lines in whole degrees, setting the one closest to dead reckoning in the center. Dead reckoning is simply your estimated position. In our example, let's say we're near 30 degrees north. So, we label our center latitude line. As the angle increases in the northern hemisphere as we go north, we label the one above as 31 degrees north, and the one below as 29 degrees north. Note the breakdown of 60 arc minutes down the center line. 60 arc minutes equals 1 degree. Also, 1 arc minute equals 1 nautical mile, which is roughly 2,000 yards or meters. Now, we go to the longitude scale and draw a line on the nearest latitude. In our example, that's 30 degrees north. The scale is in arc minutes, and since 60 arc minutes equals 1 degree, the entire width of this scale at our latitude is the average spacing of longitude in 1 degree increments. Take your divider and set it to measure the width of 1 degree longitude. With your divider set to this distance, measure to the left and right of the center line, placing two or more pencil marks at each degree increment. Then, draw and label your longitude lines. In our example, let's say our nearest longitude is 60 degrees west. As west increases towards the west, or left on the sheet, we label the left one as 61 degrees west, and the right one as 59 degrees west. Let's say our dead reckoning is 30 degrees north and 12 arc minutes, and 60 degrees west and 10 arc minutes. For latitude, remember the angle increases as we go north, so our latitude coordinate is north of degree 30. Using the scale along the center line of the page, we put a mark at 12 arc minutes above 30 degrees north. For longitude, we need to use our longitude scale. It's separated in 10 arc minute increments for the first 5 sets, then in 1 or 2 increments for the last 10 arc minutes. If you needed, for example, 25 arc minutes, you'd set your divider from 20 to 0 then halfway into the two arc minute blocks to measure out 25. In our example, we need 10 arc minutes, so we simply measure 10 with our divider. You then move your divider to the dead reckoning mark for latitude and measure out your dead reckoning longitude. In our example, our longitude is west, so it increases to the west or left of the sheet. We put a dot in this spot and label it DR for dead reckoning. This is our estimated position. In the site reduction form, you'll pick an assumed position usable with the site reduction tables. The assumed position is often different from your dead reckoning. Let's say we have an assumed latitude of 30 degrees north, an assumed longitude of 60 degrees west, and 46.5 arc minutes. Using the same methods that we used for dead reckoning, we measure out and mark our assumed position on the chart, labeling it AP for assumed position. With our site reduction form, we'll have a celestial body with an azimuth angle calculated. We use the parallel plotter to measure that angle in the center of our sheet using this compass. Then, we'll roll the plotter to our assumed position and draw a line pointing to the celestial body. This line will run through our assumed position, pointing towards the geographic position of the celestial body. In our example, let's say the azimuth is 141.9 degrees. This gives us a line pointing to the southeast, towards the geographic position of the Sun. 
With our sight reduction form, we'll have to calculate an altitude intercept using the observed altitude, abbreviated HO, and the computed altitude, abbreviated HC. If your HO is larger than your HC, then you mark the distance towards the celestial body from your assumed position. If HO is less than HC, you mark the distance away from your assumed position. The mnemonic ho mo to helps to remember this rule. In our example, let's say HO is larger than HC. So the ho mo to mnemonic reminds us that we measure from the assumed position towards the celestial body. Let's say our altitude intercept is 35.9 arc minutes. So we use our divider to measure that distance using the scale on the center line and mark this position on the azimuth towards our celestial body. The line of position lies perpendicular to the azimuth at the altitude intercept. Use a ruler to draw your line of position. In our example, we see this places the line here. We label the line of position by writing the time that we took our measurement and the name of the celestial body. Also, note LL for lower limb or UL for upper limb when needed. You repeat the process with another celestial body or two, and your actual position lies where these lines of position intersect. You label that position as fix, along with the time and date you obtain the fix in parentheses. In the future, you'll calculate your next dead reckoning by estimating your speed and direction from this point and repeating the process. In this manner, you chart your position as you navigate. Note that dead reckoning is often marked by a closed half circle. Also, there are some symbols commonly used to mark your calculated positions. The US Navy, for example, uses the following guidelines. If no more than two lines of position were used, then this is called an estimated position or EP and is marked with a square. A circle is used for three or more lines of position and is called a fix. A triangle is used if the position was obtained electronically, such as with a GPS. This concludes our video on charting a line of position. To test your understanding of what we covered in this video, click this link. It'll take you to a few questions designed to help you remember these concepts. Once you are comfortable with this material, you can move on to the next section covering the site reduction form by clicking this link.